Hi, I'd like to show you how to interpret and draw poly, uh, polyprotic acid graphs. Um, so just a little reminder, a polyprotic acid, this is going to be an acid that has more than one hydrogen to donate. Um, for example, let me write a couple examples here for you. You can have a sulfuric acid. Notice it has two hydrogens. Um, I could have a phosphoric acid that has three hydrogens. So those would be polyprotic acids. This would be diprotic, that's triprotic. In contrast, if I have just like an HCl, that's monoprotic, one hydrogen, um, and that's not considered a polyprotic, meaning many hydrogens. So this is monoprotic. These are both polyprotic, diprotic, and triprotic. Another little note, um, in these polyprotic acids, they donate one hydrogen at a time. So the first hydrogen will be completely donated, and then it goes to the second hydro um, hydrogen, and it will be uh, donated. As a result, because um, this happens in steps, there are going to be multiple Ka's. You just look at the number of hydrogens, and that's how many Ka values you're going to have. So sulfuric acid diprotic will have two Ka values. Um, phosphoric acid, three hydrogens, will have three Ka values. So I wrote an example here for you with oxalic acid. Here we have oxalic acid, two hydrogens, what's it called? Diprotic. Um, and notice that it will donate one hydrogen. So it reacts with water to produce hydronium and the product is hydrogen oxalate. Notice it donated only one hydrogen. The Ka value for this, notice how we write it, we do Ka sub one, meaning this is the first deprotonation, it's the first hydrogen that's lost, and it is 5.9 times 10 to the minus two. Now, this species, the hydrogen oxalate, it can donate the second hydrogen, so it can do a separate reaction with water. Little reminder, this uh, hydrogen oxalate in this reaction is the conjugate base, but down here is the acid that is amphoteric. Little reminder, that is an amphoteric species, meaning it can act as an acid or a base. Um, so now it's going to react with water as the acid and donate that second hydrogen. So it reacts, produces hydronium, and the final product is an oxal um, oxalate ion. Notice the Ka, we write it Ka2 because it's the second deprotonation, the second hydrogen that's lost is 6.4 times 10 to the minus five. Now a little side note that I put over here, Ka1, the value itself will always be greater than Ka2, etc. If I had a phosphoric acid, um, I would have Ka1 is greater than Ka2, which is greater than Ka3. Now remember, oxalic acid is a weak acid. <clears throat> And so it's only going to partially dissociate. So what that tells us is that the first hydrogen, it is going to deprotonate, it's going to react the most. And then losing the second hydrogen, well, that's a little less. And you can see that right here, that this is more reactant favored than this one is. So it won't react quite as much. So with each successive deprotonation, um, there is a smaller Ka value, which means less of it reacts. Now, how to draw this? I wanted to show you the titration curve. Notice two equivalence points. You will have an, an equivalence point for every hydrogen. So because this is diproduct, there are two equivalence points, two Ka values. Um, in a phosphoric acid that's triproduct, you will have three equivalence points because there's three Ka values. Um, so let me show you this. We have our oxalic acid, 0.1 molar, that we begin with, and that initial pH will be 1.28. Um, we go ahead and begin adding a strong um, base to this as we're titrating it, and its first equivalence point, which is um, equivalent to this right here, that Ka1, um, happens right here. Now, here's the significance that I want you to be able to visualize. We are titrating from this point to this point where I drew the line where that first equivalence point is. We're titrating the oxalic acid. And at this point, it is going to be where the moles of our H2C2O4, oops, sorry, O4, um, that's going to equal the moles of the hydroxide. So it's to lose, really, really important, we're losing one hydrogen right here. Now that point tells me when I've lost all of that first hydrogen, okay? So at this point, I have none of the H2C2O4 left, all right? 
I have completely consumed that first hydrogen. So at this point, all I have is this, the HC2O4, okay? So all of that first hydrogen, hydrogen number one, is gone, completely titrated and reacted. So now this second hydrogen will be titrated. The second hydrogen right there is that hydrogen, the HC2O4 minus. So this titration right here is going to be that hydrogen. So I'm at, when I'm at this point, the only thing that's left is that C2O4 minus. That second hydrogen has been completely titrated. And here we have our second equivalence point, and that happens at 8.36. So at that 8.36, all I have left is this right here. Um, so if I take it back up here to my equations, this first titration happens right there. And at this point, all I have is the hydrogen oxalate right there. And now when I do my second titration, adding hydroxide to this, all I have left is the C2O4. Now I wanna point out, I wrote these to show you the deprotonation when these are reacting in water because that's your Ka values. This is a little different. I'm actually titrating with a strong base, the hydroxide. Um, so these reactions here are not what I've written down here. I would put an OH right there and an OH right here to show uh, the titration. Just wanted to show you where the Ka's come from. So you can keep that straight in your head. I did want to show you really fast on the triprotic. Let's pretend that we are going to titrate a triprotic, like our phosphoric acid. You are going to have three equivalence points. Um, and we have a number of weak acids. We especially use them as buffers that can donate um, three, uh, three hydrogens. So you're going to have three equivalence points right there. Okay, so there you have it, polyprotic acids and their graphs. If you need more help, I have another video on just polyprotic acids themselves um, and lots of videos on acid-base equilibrium. Look under that playlist on Lean Think. Thank you. Have a great day.